This video is focusing on how to predict the products of chemical reactions. In order to predict the products of chemical reactions, the first thing you need to know is what the type of reaction is, and that's going to help you tremendously in figuring out what the products will be. This worksheet comes from Cavalcade Publishing, which you can find online. So what I'm going to do is I've color-coded each of these beginning reactions into cations and anions uh, to help better uh, predict how uh, the replacement reactions will happen. So there are five basic kinds of reactions. There's more than that, but in this uh, case, we're just going to talk about these. Synthesis or combination reactions, uh, decomposition, single replacement, double displacement or replacement, and combustion. The first thing we need to do is determine the type of reaction. Then we can predict our products, um, making sure that we, if we need to use our crisscross method to bond the elements together or the polyatomics, that we can do that correctly. The third and last thing is to balance them. So uh, we can't balance them until these other things have been done. So let's look at the first one. You have a cation and then you have a com compound that has a cation and a polyatomic. So the cation can only replace the other cation in this reaction. So this is a single displacement reaction. This one has a compound and a compound. And in that case, the two anions will replace each other and the cations will remain uh, in front of the two products. So we already know that we're going to have that. In this case up here, since silver and copper are replacing each other, we're going to put silver with sulfate and we're going to put copper alone. This is not correct yet. Um, I just wanted to kind of get you started on how to predict the reactions. And so sodium is going to bond with chlorine and calcium will bond with iodide. And so this is a double displacement reaction. Now let's go back up here and look at this one. How are silver and sulfate going to bond together? Well, the first thing you need to know are the, uh, the ions or the charges for silver and sulfate. Silver is a plus one and sulfate is a negative two. And so that means that silver is only gonna give an electron and sulfate needs two. And so when you crisscross those, you're going to write the compound this way. Okay, now that I've predicted my products using my crisscross, I can balance. And so I need two silvers on this side to equal the silvers on this side. I have one sulfate, one sulfate, one copper, one copper. I'm done. On this side, however, let's look at sodium and chlorine. Sodium has a plus one. Chlorine has a negative one. When you bond them together, they will only bond if all of the electrons are balanced. And so in this case, they each just need one, so you just need one each. Calcium, however, is going to give away two electrons. You, again, will need a periodic table to help you. Calcium is going to give away two. Iodine over here is going to take one. And so when you crisscross those numbers, it's just a trick. Um, but it's to let you know that you need two, two calciums for every one iodine. So we're going to write that correctly here. Now, when you go to balance that, um, you're going to want to pay attention to that. So um, on this side, you need... Uh, you had one sodium and one sodium, one iodine, one iodine, two calciums, okay, and I need two chlorines, so I'm going to have to do this, and that's going to mess that up. So now everything should be uh, balanced. Hold on just a second. I put my two in the wrong spot. All right, so now I have two sodiums, two iodines, two iodines, one calcium, and two chlorines. Everything is, is correct. Okay, now this is um, a, a, an element and an element bonding together. And um, since there's nothing to replace, it can't be a replacement. It looks like it could be a combustion because there's oxygen here, but this isn't a hydrocarbon. There's no carbon here. So it's just a synthesis reaction. And so we're just going to make uh, water with this. All right. So let's see, you would need two of these and two of these, and so now we're balanced. All right, this is clearly a compound with another compound, and so you're going to want to uh, trade places with those. And so I'm going to put hydrogen because he's my cation. I'm going to put manganese over here because he's my cation, and I'm going to switch partners. So I'm going to put nitrate with manganese, and I'm going to put hydroxide with the hydrogen. Now, something you need to know 
is that HOH is the same thing as water. So when we write it in a compound, uh, we're going to bond them together that way. There's a hydrogen ion, uh, which is positive, and a hydroxide ion, which is negative. And when you crisscross them, uh, you'll get HOH, but it's the same as water. Now, manganese is a plus two, and nitrate is a negative one. So whenever I crisscross those, I'm going to get this. All right. So to balance those, I'm looking at my nitrates. I have two nitrates here, so I need two nitrates over here, which gave me two hydrogens. I have two, um, two hydrogens. If you think of this as a two HOH, so two hydrogens and two hydroxides. So I have two hydroxides here and two hydroxides here. This was a double displacement. All right, again, you can see that this is a couple and a couple. It's again going to be another double displacement. Let's get our cations written out first because our compounds are always written with the cations first. We're switching partners. Nitrate's going to be with barium. Sulfate's going to be with silver. Now what we have to do is make sure that our um, ions, our electrons work out. Silver and sulfate will only bond if they both have the right number of electrons. Since sulfur is negative two and silver is plus one, you can crisscross to show that. Okay, barium is a plus two and nitrate is a uh, negative one. So we're gonna do like this and crisscross that. So now we have to balance it. If we put a two silvers, that's two silvers, two nitrites, two nitrites, excuse me, one barium, one barium, and one sulfate, one sulfate. There's two couples again, switching places. So it's again, a double displacement. I'm gonna write my cations first. All right, so we have my hydrogen and my copper, but I'm going to switch partners. So hydrogen is going to be with sulfate now, and copper is going to be with cyanide. And you'll need your polyatomic chart again. Sulfate is a negative two, and hydrogen is a plus one, so we write it like this. Copper is um, typically a two, a charge of plus two, and since he was here, we're going to keep him that way here. And um, cyanide is a one. So in order to balance that out, you'll just need a two in front of this, and you're all done. Okay, again, this is a double displacement. There's a lot of double displacements here. So um, you need to think of the water as an H and an OH, and there's your cation and your anion. So we're gonna write our H again, and we're gonna write our silver, and we're just gonna trade partners. And so silver is gonna be with hydroxide now because H was with hydroxide. You have to think of it that way. And then the iodide goes with hydrogen. So H is a plus one, iodine is a negative one. When you crisscross cross those, you just need one of each. Silver is a one, hydroxide is a one. When you crisscross them, you just need one of each, so it's already balanced. Again, another double displacement. So let's look at our products. We have hydrogen and we have iron. And so we're gonna trade partners. And so the hydroxide's gonna go with hydrogen. When you have hydrogen and hydroxide, we said before that that's gonna be water. This is an iron three because that's where the three came from. So iron three nitrate, you need three of those as well. It just so happens that it's a three as well because this was a three and this is a one and when you crisscross those. All right, so let's go back and balance our reaction. So if we have three of these, um, three nitrates, then uh, one, and you can have three of these and one of these, okay? So if you think of three HOHs, to help you a little bit, three H's and three H's, three nitrates, three nitrates, three hydroxides and three hydroxides, one iron and one iron. Again, another double displacement here. We have lithium is a cation and cobalt is a cation. So go ahead and write those down first. Switch partners, lithium is with sulfite. Uh, lithium is a one and sulfite's a one. Cobalt is a two. CO plus two, because you can tell uh, about how it was used. Actually, it's not a plus two. Um, sulfite was a negative two. And in order for this two to be here, this had to be a cobalt four. And when you crisscrossed them, you got a CO2, SO3, four, but you reduced it because you don't actually need double of everything to cobalt and sulfite uh, like that. So it's actually cobalt four. So cobalt four with bromine, bromine is a one, cobalt is a four. So when you crisscross, you get that. So when you go to balance it, you need four of these and you need two of these. And like 
this, okay? So you have four lithiums. Um, oops, I messed up here. Okay, all right. So four lithiums and uh, four lithiums, four bromines, four bromines, one cobalt, one cobalt, and two sulfites, two sulfites. Okay, this is a single displacement. Silver is replacing lithium. And so you have silver with nitrate and lithium is left on its own, so it's a single displacement. And silver is a one, nitrate's a one, so when you crisscross them, they just need one of each. All right, let's keep going. I want to go over just a couple of these. This is a synthesis. You would have to be told, is this NO2? Is this nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide? In this case, it's nitrogen dioxide. It's a synthesis, and so um, it would create that, and then you can balance it um, like so. Okay, now carbonates will break up into carbon dioxide and then the metal compound or the cation. And so if you go ahead and put your carbon dioxide here, your hydrogen uh, with your oxygen is going to not just be like that. It's going to be H2O with water. And so you end up with that. And so when you balance that, it looks like it's all balanced. Okay, and this is a decomposition. Okay, uh, this is a single displacement, and so cesium is going to replace aluminum. So we have cesium chloride, and cesium is um, a plus one, and chlorine is a negative one, so you just need one of each. And you have aluminum, but you got to balance this out. So if you put a three in front of here to get your chlorines worked out, you need a three there. This is a single displacement. This is another single displacement um, reaction and gallium and aluminum switch places. So you have gallium nitrate, and it happens to be a plus three as well. And then you have aluminum, so you don't need to balance anymore. Um, let me skip down to number 17. It's the first combustion reaction we've had. It's a hydrocarbon with oxygen, so you always make carbon dioxide and water. I just wanted to point that out, so then you'll have to balance uh, your reaction this way. Four carbons, um, eight hydrogens, so there's gonna be a four in front of this, and then um, you need six of these. Okay, so this is a combustion reaction, okay? Um, we've done several double displacement, single displacement. Again, this is a decomposition, so let's look at this one. It's gonna actually decompose into the two elements of nitrogen and oxygen, but oxygen is a Brinkelhoff, and so you're never gonna see it just all by himself, so you have to write it as O2. Um, and so then you have to balance it this way. And so you have four sodiums and two oxygens. This is a decomposition reaction, but I wanted to point that out. So, okay, thank you very much.